Hello and welcome to the Movie Mouth Film and TV Podcast. On this very episode, we have one of our most anticipated movie releases of the year so far, with Bob Odenkirk's John Wick meets Saul Goodman in Nobody. HBO Max also continued their run of Balls to the Wall releases with the madness that is Mortal Kombat! But will it be a fatality or a flawless victory? And as ever, we have a classic film to watch in our Video Store Corner section, and this week, we ask Jack Burton himself whether he's got the stuff to deal with David Lopan and the Three Storms in big trouble in Little China. On top of it all, every week we discuss the latest film news, trailer breakdowns, and answer some of our listener questions. More of that later in this very episode. This is Miles, and as ever... I'm joined by a man who, when propositioning me to become his co-host on this here very pod, had the following exchange. Miles, I desperately want to make love to a schoolboy. No, 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 I, um, that's not what I meant. <laughs> what I meant was, uh, I like you, Miles. I like you a lot. I want to ask you a question straight out, flat out, and I want, to give, want, want you to give me an honest answer. What do you think the chances are of a guy like you and a guy like me ending up on a podcast together. Just hit me with it. Just give it to me straight. I came a long way just to see you, Miles. Least you could do is level with me. What are my chances? Well, Phil, um, I'm going to say not good. You mean like not good, like one out of a hundred? More like one out of a million. So you're saying there's a chance. Yeah, I read you. I read you. Of course, it's Phil. <laughs> Hello, Phil. <laughs> oh, there, Miles. Welcome back. <laughs> that was great. I liked it a lot. Oh, I like it a lot. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I heard you uh, You did something very exciting, didn't you? Oh, week? God. Yeah, who 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 told you? Uh, you did. Who told you? you did. Was it my therapist? No, it was you. Oh, oh, that. Oh, sorry. I thought <laughs> when you were... I say I heard, I mean you told me. <laughs> what you... <laughs> you told that I did something that good. You did something. Phil, Phil, I did something good this week. Yeah. What did you do? Even though I know, I went to the. I went to a fucking cinema, ladies and gentlemen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, the first time I've been to a cinema in over, I think, 13, 14 months in New York. Wow. In New York, parenthesis. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, wow. That's we're cool. back. Weird. Going to the movies. Uh, watch something that we're going to review later in the show. Yeah. But I won't spoil it. But what I will say is, holy shit, did I miss the uh, movie going experience. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You were very excited when you spoke to me about it. I was. I went to the IPIC in the Fulton Street Market, which is um, downtown, right, and uh, right by the South Street Seaport in Manhattan. Yeah, and it's one of those swanky movie theaters where you you can like order food to your seat mm-hmm. and alcohol, alcohol. That's the best. It's honestly is the best. Yeah, I had a I had a, a I had a bottle of wine, <laughs> which is probably why you're reviewing this movie and i'm reviewing the other movie. you don't remember what you watched did you no 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 idea it was just i was just excited to be back in, in the cinema <laughs> you just got drunk in another room that's all that happened I, I, to be honest i don't even know if i was in a cinema if, if i was just in my living room <laughs> it's just you just turned it up louder than normal yeah and had and invited a load of strangers to just sit in my apartment with yeah me. and eat noisily in the background yeah yeah that's actually funny you say that so very un-british of me but I realized that I actually did miss the audience participation in American cinema. Yeah. And yeah. And so because this is one of those swanky cinemas, like I said, where they have food and stuff, the couple next to, to me and the person that I went with were sitting watching the movie and the waiter brought in like a burger and like fries and whatever. And she put on this like flashlight on her phone. And the guy was doing something. And I was like, so why has she put this flashlight on? So obviously she was helping this guy, like her partner or whatever, to like look at the food and sort the food out and everything, right? right? But because they were sitting directly in front of the screen, it created this kind of shadow puppet (laughs) 
silhouettes <laughs> that was just playing out over the top of the movie that I was watching, which actually was something I'm actually reviewing now as if it was a movie in itself. And basically what happened is I saw like this like kind of round flat object and a hand kind of come in and like lift it up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the hell was that? It was like kind of taking it off. And I'm guessing it was like the top of a burger bun, yeah. right? And then all of a sudden I saw these like two kind of like weird little fingery hands like floating at the top of the screen. And again, this was completely obscuring like the movie that I was watching. Right. Like these like puppet master hands and like ripping at some kind of rectangular thing. I was like, what is it? What are they doing? What are they doing over there? And I couldn't, I kept looking over and I couldn't see. And then all of a sudden I saw this like squirting coming out of this rectangle, <laughs> like dolloping down onto the top. Oh. And it was the ketchup coming out of the, the foil wrapper packet. Oh and uh, firing all over the burger. And then I saw the bun go back on the top. And then I saw a fry get picked up and dunked <laughs> and then kind of get carried away from the screen. It was amazing. I, I, I mean, like, I usually would be pissed off by that, you know, of course. Yeah. But the fact that I haven't had the chance to do that, or at least be annoyed by that <laughs> in a long yeah. time, yeah, I know what you mean. kind of was a positive, right? Yeah. And there was also, there was also this great scene in, in the movie, which I won't spoil, but... Somebody, unbeknownst to us watching, whips out a shotgun in this movie yeah. and it, it and blows someone away. And there's a kind of moment of silence in between the gun coming out and firing. And the gun pops out and this guy in the back row was like, no fucking way. And then just went bang. And I was like, yeah, this is great. We're back. Yeah. Normality. Oh, that's cool. And do you want to know the best part, Philip? Go on. My darling boy. Go on. I had popcorn. Oh, my God. God. Sweet or salty? Or both? In America, they don't have sweet popcorn. What? It's America. Uh, How the fuck is that a thing? That they don't have only, it. But they, what they do do is they yeah. will, you will buy like a, like a cardboard packet of sweets and then pour them into the popcorn. That's, That's the like most stupid thing. thing I've ever heard. No, they don't do sweet popcorn here. No. I don't understand. Welcome to Miles and Phil talk about America <laughs> and popcorn. Yeah. I actually, I'm no longer into the sweet popcorn. I'm more into the salty popcorn for that reason. I like if you that. just I... get a packet of like Swedish fish or like Reese's Pieces and just pour it in, it's so you it's get a little insane. treat every now and again, like a little yeah, it's like a little melted, trinket. melted. <laughs> like a treasure, treasure to watch dive. Your neighbours in the cinema pour. Ketchup I, all over the screen. I used to get mixed. I, I used to like the mixed popcorn, like mix the sweet yeah. and salty. Yeah. So I you, know get, you know, that. it's like a lottery. I used to just be a sweet popcorn guy. Mm. But then I moved here and I was like, I've been doing it wrong. Well, fair enough. And here they also get that butter thing. You can like pump butter on it and it's the. <laughs> oh, the, thing, the and see. that's what I wanted to hear about. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why my arteries are clogged with <laughs> cholesterol. Butter and salty popcorn. And you've got Reese's Pieces for eyes. <laughs> Reese's Pieces for eyes. Your eyes are lies and mine are pies. Yours are lies and mine are Reese's Pieces. Anyway, uh, getting us back on track. What have you been watching this, this week, Phil? Uh, well, um, I finally finished Your Honor. Get out of here. Yeah. Um, what did you make of that ending? I didn't expect it. So... Question last on the last episode, you said I am surprised because I feel like they're gearing up for another season. Do you still think that's the case? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Know. Very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, when you said that, I was like, hmm. <laughs> don't like, say just you wait and see. Yeah, uh, yeah, very interesting. Interesting end. Liked it, liked it a lot. I like it, I, love I like it a lot. Yeah, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, really, really Wrapped enjoyed it up it. perfectly. Yeah. I think they, um, again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I think they really crammed a lot into the last episode. Brian Cramston. They Cramstoned it all in there. Yeah, they did. It was a rushed old ending, wasn't it? I think I don't yeah. think it was until like the last five, ten minutes where you were like, okay, I don't know how they're going to wrap this up. Well, that's what like, I mean. That's why no, we wrapped it up and yeah. there's a little bow on top. That's why I thought it was going to be another series because you thought there's no way they're wrapping all this up in ten minutes. Oh, they did. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I was like, they yeah. wrapped. Oh my god, but, they, they're going for it. They did. They it. went for it. They did it well. I think they went for it. So yeah, very good. Very and it, good. it still ended the series with like zero likable people in it. Yes. Yeah. I didn't like anyone until no. the end. I was like, all right, fair enough. That was that then. Yeah. No, I know what, what you happened? mean. Completely, hundred yeah. percent true. Um. So that was good. And then, 
uh, started uh, Deutschland 89, which mm-hmm. started on Channel 4, I think, a week or two ago. But yeah, well. I've been very much enjoying that and the last two seasons before it. Is the soundtrack still as good as the other two seasons? Because you, you've sent me a few songs that I've absolutely have. loved from that soundtrack. Yeah, it's a really good soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's really, it's very good. It's very, very late 80s, believe it or not. Um, and then the other thing I watched that was just randomly managed to turn over when it started was um, a film I'd not seen for a while Galaxy Quest. Oh, which I love. I love that film. It's a, it's a, it's a real decent comedy, isn't it? Yep. Great idea as well. You know, sort of parried in the whole uh, Star Trek, you know, sci fi nerdishness. But in a loving kind of way. Yeah. That oh, doesn't yeah. Doesn't ever rip it. No, not at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's brilliant. It, it's a great film. Yeah. Um, still looks good. Yeah. And really Bill like Hader in that, like when when we were younger watching it, we never really recognised him, but he's one of the I can't remember the actual name of the alien race that like. No, that's can I? Uh, <laughs> and I watched it the other day. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll yeah. come back to it. Yeah, but we'll yeah. come back to that. <laughs> but it's very good. So that yeah, I, 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 plus the stuff we've been watching for review has been quite a busy time, really. It has been a it's been a busy old time. I um. I sat down and I finished Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh, yes. Okay. And that was an ending. Holy hell. Um, right. But that brought us a new Captain America. Okay. So I'm not going to say anything else. But all I will say is, I mean, if you watch the first episode, there's a new Captain America. So but all I will say is, there's a new Captain America. Right. Um, and I think like they all came off really well. There's definitely a very um, uh, kind of relevant recent message around racism in that which Mm -hmm. is it's it's great that it gets that platform um of course um but it's also goes off in its kind of own own direction a little bit um which again i think is great um you know and at at the same time i think the kind of general movie itself or the premise of the show itself is a little bit lost it's a little bit kind of here there and everywhere it kind of zips around all over the place which right for me, kind of dilutes the message or makes it slightly kind of squashed in in certain places, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but you have to kind of watch it to kind of understand what I'm talking about. Like, I absolutely loved it and, like, Marvel throwing all the money at this or Disney throwing all the money at that was great. I tell you what I have been watching, which I'm obsessed with. Uh, mm-hmm. There are three seasons of this. It's a show, Sony Sony Home Video show called right. louder milk which is uh it's a, a peter farrelly of the farrelly brothers ironically dumb and dumber and there's something something about mary and kingpin yeah. he for the first time is kind of spun off from his brother bobby and he's done a show called louder milk which stars ron livingston the amazing ron livingston from office space yeah. or uh, captain nixon from um Band of Brothers, who yep. you'll know. Um, so he's in this as a Alcoholics Anonymous uh, kind of guidance counselor that runs a support group. And it's really good, really, really good show. It's mm. like it pushes the kind of PC element to its limits, as you could probably imagine. Um, but it's also really fun, like a really fun show. The characters really start to develop as it goes along. And uh, it's, it's kind of written on the back of a beer mat in a pub somewhere. Yeah. But it's also it's also great. I I'm like addicted to it at the moment. So Louder Milk, which is here in the US, you can watch that on Amazon Prime. All three seasons are on there. They just got added. Okay. I've been trying to watch this for a little while and um they obviously just got they just got acquired by by Amazon, I guess. Oh cool. So yeah, so so that was great. Um and of course, uh it was the Oscars this week. So I guess it kind was. of moving into the into the news section. Mm. I um for our listeners that follow us on social media will know that I was, of course, live streaming um, the Oscars this year you as were. the Academy announced the winners. Well, I was tucked um, up in bed. You were tucked up. You were in bed. I was doing all the groundwork, all the hard work. That's what you get for living in the correct time zone, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, are you in the correct time zone or am I in the correct time zone? You're in the correct time zone to watch the Oscars live. 
this sounds like an Avengers Endgame spoiler special mm. what we're talking about. Um, but no, you're right. I was in the, in the correct time zone. Um, so I think we'll, we'll kind of pick out some of the, the winners and mm. some of the notable losers from this. Um, you know, I think obviously the night really belonged to Chloe Zhao and Nomadland, a movie that we discussed on I think, episode 22. Yeah. Um, yep. Which obviously she won the Academy Award for, for directing. Um, which is incredible. The first Asian woman to ever win, um, in fact, person of color, I believe, to ever win a, a director's um, Oscar, right? which is huge. Um, and of course, Frances McDormand also picked up the actor or actress in a leading role, uh, also for, for Nomadland. Um, there was some surprises of the night. Um, I would say probably the big one was actor in a leading role. Um, in this category, you had uh, Stephen Yun in Minari. You had Gary Oldman in Mank, which he was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Chadwick Boseman in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And I think this was kind of nailed on for him a little bit. I think people kind of assumed he was going to win this. Yeah. Um, uh, Riz Ahmed, Sound of Metal. But it was won by none other than the 83-year-old, making him the oldest ever Oscar winner in the history of the Academy. Anthony Hopkins yeah, for the father, which surprised a lot of people. And sadly, he wasn't there to do a speech. No. So, no. So that was, it was kind of weird. So Joaquin Phoenix kind of just accepted it on his behalf, thanked the Academy and kind of disappeared. And then that was the end of the show. And it was like, wait, what? What just happened? Like yeah. Chadwick Boseman didn't get something, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, you kind of talked about his performance in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And and I think if I recall in the review, you kind of said that he's part of more of an ensemble than a kind of standout lead. If that's if that's uh, accurate, I don't know. He's he is quite prominent in it, and it's it was a a great performance as well. Like really, really great performance. I think, as I said at the time though, that that film for me, although it was really good, it felt mm. theatre, right? Because it was just, it was just th you know it was just. Uh, a live a, re a recorded theater performance to me yeah but it was it was yeah. awesome um and his performance was really strong in it and sort of went through you know he went through the ringer of emotions in the thing so it was you know it was great it was probably i'm sure it's worthy of it um yeah i can't say i've seen the hopkins film that he won it for so right yeah yeah uh, i mean hopkins hopkins right at the end of the day yeah that's right i mean you know um and obviously he'd won before for silence of the lambs yeah. So it did kind of feel strange. I think maybe the fact that he was up against Chadwick Boseman as well, I think maybe he didn't even bother to, to attend. They had this weird kind of, because um, obviously, you know, social distancing rules. They had uh, the, I think it was the Grand Central Station in Los Angeles. Um, right. I can't remember the specific name of it, that they decked out for the American, um, you know, people that live in America to attend. And then in the UK, they had the BFI. Right. So you had like Gary Oldman and everybody else, Kerry Mulligan in, in the BFI in the UK, oh, okay. kind of watching... Uh, the the screen it was it was kind of weird cool. had, yeah. yeah it was pretty cool like, kind of seeing how they did that um, but yeah I think you know there were there were there were some I think there were some omissions we kind of talked about this for me Delroy Lindo in The Five Bloods wasn't even nominated for yeah. me we talked about it on I think our second or third ever episode yeah I think it was like the second he he, he should should have been up for it and he should have won it uh, yeah. from 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 me. Um, Actor in a supporting role, though, and I will take absolute credit for this. If you listen to our Judas and the Black Messiah review, I dropped Daniel Kaluuya you as an, an Oscar winner, giving a Pacino-like 70s, 80s, 90s level performance. Yeah. And he crushed it, and his speech was amazing. So he, he won for Best Supporting Actor. For me, I don't really know if he was a supporting actor in that movie, because it was a two-hander be between him and Lakeith Stanfield. Right. I feel like he probably should have I feel like he probably should have won the the actor in a leading role yeah um but it was just you know there were a lot of a lot of um there were there were a lot of options there animated feature film soul um Disney Pixar which I fucking loved and uh I haven't quite recovered from watching it yet but it was fucking brilliant it also won best soundtrack which yep. was uh Trent Reznor Atticus Ross and uh Jean uh, Baptiste yeah. which is a really great score. I love it. Really touching score. Um, 
documentary was the Netflix documentary, My Octopus Teacher, um, which a lot of people have been talking about. Uh, you called this, so um, best sound design, Yeah, Sound of Metal. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's, you could, you know, it was the perfect film to be, uh, you know, at the front of that. It was just, you could tell that it was going to be, you know, it was clever. It was a clever sound design and it was something yeah. different. So you could yeah. tell they were going to be pinned on for it. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. And they because they also won um, is it best uh, best uh, editing as well? I think it was. yes, they did. Best film that's editing. Right. Yeah, yep. Yep. which is pretty that's right. cool. Yeah, yep. so I thought that was which cool. I think I think that was I think that was nailed on as well. Um, I think for both, I think you were, you absolutely nailed it. Um, the the final one, the one that I really care about, I care about this every year was uh, cinematography. Yeah, and uh, Eric Messersch- Messerschmidt won this for Mank, the David Fincher movie, Mm -hmm. which I love David Fincher and I love his impact on cinematography. I think he pretty much is the cinematographer of most of his movies and I think he kind of sets out the scene, but he he tends to work with people like Eric Messerschmidt who did, uh, who filmed and shot a lot of um, uh, his Netflix content that he's filmed filmed so far. Mm. But for me, I think Sean Bobbitt of Judas and the Black Messiah was robbed. And that's right. something I called out on the on the review as well. That film was fucking gorgeous to look at. Mm. Um, so I was kind of sad to to kind of see that. Um, but you know, none, nonetheless, I think it was a it was an interesting Oscars. It was kind of muted. Um, the speeches were kind of were, were kind of were kind of fun. Um, Yoo Jung Yoon, who won for Minari, the uh, Korean actress, gave an amazing speech, and she was she was going on and on and on for ages. Brad Pitt gave her the the award and she was kind of freaking out that Brad Pitt was kind of just stood next to her on the stage. <laughs> it was really cute, really, really cute speech. And like they didn't even play her off. I think they were just like, just let it go. Let her yeah. run. Um, so yeah, I think all in all, um, you know, a, a good Oscars. I think, you know, obviously they're, they're kind of limited in the type of movies they had out. There are a lot of movies that weren't released last year. So yeah. we'll see what happens next year. Maybe we could do like a kind of prediction on some of the stuff that's coming out this year to, mm. to kind of talk about that. Uh, that was the Oscars. Anything else to kind of note, mention? From the Oscars? Um, no, I, I did see that Tenet had won uh, Best Visual Effects, which is very cool. And, yeah. you know, the only film I saw at the cinema last year was Tenet, and it was with you, wasn't it, as we discussed? It was, yeah. Um, and I think that's pretty well-deserved from the stuff yeah. I'd seen. I mean, yeah, because it was very different. You know, I don't, a lot of the stuff that they'd done in that wasn't hadn't been done before. Like Had you seen anything stuff. like it? Never seen anything like no, it? No, never seen anything in my like life. It. So you could, yeah, you could hundred percent see that that was coming as well. So kind of trying to get my head around half of it. But. Yeah, but uh, to be honest, like because I I love it so much, I would probably have put like Godzilla versus Kong up there with that because the visual effects You're in that insane. were amazing. No, no, all right. You're insane. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> more news why were they flying around in spaceships um uh, yeah so <laughs> more news from you phil yeah so i've got a couple of bits of news so the first one is that um for fans of horror and zombie horror in particular george a romero's uh final zombie movie twilight of the dead uh is in development to be filmed and released post humusly humus <laughs> Humus. <laughs> Humus. 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 The Fissipopoli. I like a Fissipopoli Humus. <laughs> you do not mess with the Zohan, Phil. You do not mess with the Zohan. I can't say it. Anyway, he died. And Posthumously. Come... Posthumously. That's the one. Yeah. And it's come, he's come, he's coming out. <laughs> Posthumously. <laughs> Posthumous. Uh, yeah. So that's good. Pass the Humus. Um, yeah. So, well, it's ironic, isn't it? Oh, isn't it? Isn't it? Dawn of the Dead. I hope yep. he makes a cameo in it. You should just call it Movie of the Dead. <laughs> you should just call it George A. Romero, Back from the Dead. <laughs> George, George A. Romero's Back from the Dead. <laughs> <laughs> like but, a weekend at Bernie's type I mean, movie where they're just like wrong, getting him I am to write a, a movie. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big Romero fan. I love. Yeah, Dawn of the Dead, all of those, the whole lot. I love them. He did a lot. Even Land of the Dead, starring John Leguizamo. It was all right. It was all right. But no, there's a lot that aren't great, but like he did a lot. 
for that era yeah, of cinema sure. and that and mm-hmm. that genre. You Absolutely. know, without without that, you wouldn't have had half the stuff that's out now. No. In the horror in the horror world. So it's good that and it's with the full support of his um uh his partner his, his wife, widow. right? Yeah, his wife, yeah. yeah. So um yeah, but she is adamant that apparently that, you know, she gets like the say on what gets put out. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's really good. I think that's really good news, and it, it'd be good to see one more, one more film that's got his name attached to it. Yeah, I heard it's a continuation from the of the Dead trilogy. Yes, I think that they're cutting or not trilogy. Sorry, I think they are including Land of the Dead in that, but they're cutting out Diary of the Dead and yeah, the one after that, which I can't remember the name of off the top of my head, but we'll come back to that. Yeah, um, but that's been expunged from canon. Um, expunged, expunged of the dead, the sponge of the dead. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that they are going to draft in a director to direct that. The script is locked, ready to rock and roll. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we shall see what happens with that. Uh, yeah, I'll be excited to see that. Uh, and then the other cool piece of news I have, and I don't know, I don't told you about this, but I don't know if this is news to you or not, or to anyone else. Right, but I'm it was news. Myself in. It was news to me, right? So a friend of mine sent me a photo on. Uh, on messenger saying um <laughs> all right i get that a lot as well saying that st- <laughs> and it was a photo of like a vehicle. Does your wife know <laughs> sorry it was a photo of what it was a photo of like a like a vehicle carrier thing you know like you get loads of cars in, in on a like a vehicle transport thing like taking yeah. someone had taken on their mobile phone on a motorway and in the back of the vehicle carrier was loads of world war Two jeeps okay and this is like in his local area, which is around like Windsor Way, I think he lives. And um, it's in the UK. And uh, I, he and he said with that message, so Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks have been spotted in town. No. Okay. Right. So I got very excited because you got those two and World War II vehicles mm. on the back of a transport. <laughs> yes. So... <laughs> <laughs> in yeah. production at the moment is um it's called masters of the air no so, yeah so spielberg and tom hanks uh are executive producers on there um and it follows apparently the actions of the eighth air force of the u.s air force in world war Two. Uh, and it's produced by the same company that did Band of Brothers and the Pacific. So I am like 100% on board, massively excited so about that'd this. that would be what, HBO and BBC? Yeah, yeah, it's like the yep. same. Yeah, so how cool is that? So that's, Oh, my goodness. So you're going to have like Band of Brothers, with, but with air battles this time. Oh. oh, my God. Imagine it. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. I know, I know, because Band of Brothers and Band of Brothers is one of the best things that I've ever watched in my life. Like, I love it. And Me then too. Pacific was also awesome, very different to Band of Brothers, but mm-hmm. it was really good. So anything with those two on board, I'm, I'm down I'm for that. Well too. up for that, yeah. I'm totally down for that. It's a shame it's not about the Royal Air Force Battle of Britain would have been great, but I guess that's kind of been yeah. done. Yeah. Um, but this sound that sounds incredible. Yeah. Exciting, oh, right? God. That's really exciting. I'm actually excited. Yeah. I I got chills when you said that. I'll send you genuinely. the photo of the uh like Send it to me. Stupid we'll, photo of the two. And we'll, like, we shall put it out as exclusive on the at Movie Mouth podcast Instagram account. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm not sure if he actually took it, but it's someone that someone's All taking. Right. So, what do you want? Credit for it? <laughs> Paying for it? What's going on? <laughs> you get nothing from us. I hope there's not a scene where Rami Malek is throwing stones into the brain cavity of a dead soldier. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Not. That was weird, right? That was a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else from you? No. Well, you dropped a bloody bombshell there. Yeah. Pun intended. Beat that one. Pun intended. Great. So, uh, sitting down, I, I actually watched this. I actually watched a trailer this week, Phil. You'd be surprised. Trailer's I watched. Cool, yes, right? Yeah, go on. I watched a Spiral from the Book of Saw, which is its yeah. official name, apparently, which is the new Saw movie. Movies mm. that I've hated with a passion ever since I saw the first Just one. That's what we decided needed. Never to watch any of the others. Exactly what we needed when we're all stuck at home watching movies on TV about people being tortured to death. Um, the first yeah, one was I, right. the, It was terrible, wasn't it? No, I liked it. The I James liked the first one. one. I, I yeah. hated it, I think, just because it had Kerry Elwes in a dramatic role and I just couldn't take it seriously. Because Nestor <laughs> his arm off at some point. He saw his leg, wasn't he? He saw his leg off. 
You saw his leg off. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen it since 2006, six, seven, whenever it came out. Six. Yeah. Um, but anyway, this is the new trailer which shows Chris Rock as a detective. Weird. And Samuel yeah. L. Jackson. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I automatically don't want to see it and really want to see it at the same time. I just want, I want to see Chris Rock drop in like making fun of the whole situation. Motherfucker! I, I like, want to see Chris Rock saw his own head saw off. motherfucker! This goddamn clown get out of the goddamn <laughs> tricycle started cycling around. I want to see him saw his own head off. Yeah, I want to see him saw his own head off. I yeah. want to see him saw Samuel L. Jackson's head off. Yeah. And, and as Samuel L. Jackson's getting his head off, he's like, motherfucker, you can't saw my motherfucking head off. <laughs> That's what I He's what I want. all over the place. Just all eyes a bulge. Wow. But yeah, that's what I, I want to see. Maybe that maybe we're going to get a um, a Mr. Arnold from Jurassic Park redo where his arm falls off and lands on Chris Rock and he goes, Oh, yeah. Oh, Mr. Arnold. And then he oh. walks around with his arm on him. <laughs> maybe. That's what I want to see. I wouldn't put it past him. We don't need another Saw film, really. They should have put that one to bed. I mean, I uh, that's all I've got to say about the trailer. I, I, I didn't absorb anything else from it. But yeah. needless to say, it kind of looks like fairly well shot and decent kind of decently produced so right i don't know take from that what you will could yeah mm. <laughs> what did you see this week phil you watched the trailer yeah i did now oh uh i don't think you've heard of this one either which is i'm, I'm dropping all of the new stuff this week you are a I know. professional <laughs> so if i said to you director rennie harlan oh. yes uh, as you may speed know, speed two uh, Die Hard 2. Also, oh, sorry, yeah, Die Hard 2. Die Hard 2 and Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger, yes. Two Who winners Speed there. Two? Who did Speed 2? I'm not sure. Cruise Control. You'd have to look it up. All right, he might, have done. he might have done that. If it, can, if it popped right. to your head straight away, it probably did. Um, so, yeah, if I say to you, director, Rennie Harlan, director of Die Hard 2 and Cliffhanger, starring Pierce Brosnan and Tim Roth, what would you say? Sorry, I wasn't listening to you. I was looking up Rennie Harlan. <laughs> oh, say that again. Oh, oh, thanks. If I said to you, director Rennie Harlan, director of Die Hard yeah. 2 and Cliffhanger, and I said starring Pierce Brosnan and Tim Roth, what would you say? I would say... Hey, honey bunny. <laughs> get all the fucking wallets in the fucking diner. Yes, this is The Misfits, which is coming out on uh, June the 15th. So this looks pretty fun, actually. It's like... Um, it looks like quite a sort of light-hearted heist action film. Um, right. So the story is, after being recruited by a group of unconventional thieves, renowned criminal Richard Pace uh, finds himself caught up in an elaborate gold heist D- that promises to have... <laughs> Dick Pace. I didn't even think about that. Uh, he gets himself caught up in an elaborate gold heist that promises to have far-reaching implications on his life and the lives of countless others. But it looks like there's some okay. really cool like action set pieces in this. It's like mm-hmm. set in, I think it's like Abu Dhabi or uh, somewhere, and it's like, yeah, like loads of desert, like buggy, dune buggy chases and lots of explosions. Ooh. And and yeah, it looks like really good fun. So that's that's the okay. Um yeah. Did you find out about Speed 2 Cruise Control? Yeah, well, it definitely wasn't Speed 2. But what I will say is that he he's dropped off a little bit in recent years, hasn't he? Um <laughs> He has he has dropped off in recent years, but I will say, Cliffhanger, you're absolutely right. Um, I think that's probably his biggest movie. He did do Driven with Sly Stallone in 2001. Do you remember that? The, yeah, the, I mean, that was pretty good. The Indy 500 type yeah, movie right. that was that was pretty good. Like Die Hard Two, huh? Like Sylvester Stallone had ever fit in like a, <laughs> an Indy car? Yeah, he that's was right. having a fit. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember. Oh, would ever fit? He's tiny, Sly Stallone. <laughs> Yeah, I know he's tiny, but he's like he's bulky, isn't he? He is pretty bulky. He's got some wide old shoulders on him. He also one directed. Drivers, uh, as he also directed two uh, two absolute flops: Cutthroat Island, ninety five, yeah, Gina that's... Davis, yeah, and then The Long Good Night as well, with mm. also with Gina Davis. Two films that I actually quite liked, but also Deep Blue Sea. <laughs> oh yeah, speaking of Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Wow, what a movie! Wait, he directed but... Deep Blue Sea. <laughs> He did, oh yeah. God. Since then, he's been a little bit, let's just say, under the radar. Um, right. So we'll see if we'll see if this is this is any good. Um, but nonetheless, exciting. Yeah, exciting stuff, isn't it? 
Uh, the, the Misfits, yeah. Not to be confused with the TV series of the same name. Um, oh, and then I've got an absolute corker for you, right? Literally, is I it a humdinger? Out, I fa- yeah, I found out about this like an hour before we we started doing this, and there's the trailer. <laughs> I'll send you a link in a bit. Basically, you know, the Sci-Fi Channel seems to make like yeah. versions of films that you know, have already been made and then call them something else. Well, they've, I don't know if it's anything to do with the sci-fi channel, but it looks like it should be. But what's coming out soon is, uh, (laughs) ape versus monster. (laughs) Is that Godzilla versus Kong? (laughs) It's a hundred percent. So there's, there's a, there's a big ape and he's not quite as big as King Kong. Right. And there's a monster, which happens to be the, quite a lot like Godzilla. Godzilla. Is it a lizard? Yeah. And <laughs> you see What's like it called? This, Gorilla versus Monster. It's called Ape versus Monster. Oh. Like honestly, watch the trailer because it's like one of the worst things you'll ever see. <laughs> and it's got like it's got like half decent special effects, but they look like like a shit version. It's just the shit version of Godzilla versus Kong. It's just Amazing. Or, it looks awful. Like can Godzilla, uh, can Kong, can the ape talk? Uh, no, but they can talk to him, and it seems like he can. He like follows their orders. Follows their orders. What? He look- he, he's a good waiter. <laughs> he's like I'm a big. Uh, sorry, did you order the white, <laughs> the white Russian <laughs> Moscow mule? Like, no, get it the right. The fries for the table and the bottle of Cabernet. I mean, it looks spectacular. Like it right. looks uh, in a really shit way. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna send you the. I'll send you the link. We'll put the link. You up just on made there. you just made me think of the movie Congo, and I feel like that's something that we need to go back and rewatch for Congo. the video. Oh, yeah, we should do that. Yeah. Wow. Amy, want raindrop drink? <laughs> Did that monkey just order a martini? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to do that. Uh, wow. Yeah. Well, there we are. Did you? All right, let's you... move on. Yeah, it's time on. for some reviews. Let's go. So, Phil. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, that's creepy, wasn't it? <laughs> it was very creep- creepy. Sorry about that. Um, have you been sat alone at night on a bus um, when a group of people get on that bus and you decide to mercilessly rip them a new one? Uh, I mean, that situation's played through my head quite a lot of times on the, the night bus. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> I've never acted this, upon it, but this was reenacted in a movie recently, wasn't it? It was a movie that it? I saw in the cinema, and you watched at home. And that movie is that movie is nobody. Uh, so this this is um, this is one I was looking forward to for ages. So I, I mentioned the trailer for this last year um, uh, when I saw it, and it's the the new revenge action film to jump on the on the bandwagon after the massive success of the the john wick films which is the obvious thing that you're going to compare it to so no doubt you know universal are hoping to stretch what's probably a much lower budget uh to a similar level of box office success i think because you know i think they've pretty much opened it up for for more to come with it as well uh and where better to start that than to hire the writer Derek Colstead, who wrote all three John Wick movies as well. <laughs> so, you know, get him on board. It's going to be a winner, isn't it, really? Mm-hmm. Um, so, as I said, I've, I've been really looking forward to it ever since I saw the trailer, and I'm a big fan of Bob Bob Odenkirk as well. Um, I know he, he's, you know, known for a lot of stuff, you know, sketch comedy and yeah, it, it, from the past, but I, like many others, may have been introduced to him mainly from seeing him as the lawyer Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad um, and he's great in that but to be honest I think he has been absolutely brilliant in the five series of Better Call Saul which was the follow up like you know his own show that's been on Netflix um, and there's a sixth season coming soon as well I think um, and he is such a good performance that he doesn't. I'm not sure if you watched that Better Call Saul. No, I haven't. No. I, I I was a huge fan of his in Breaking Bad. 
I just I wanted to after Breaking Bad. I just wanted to bed in a little bit before I got into yeah. Better Call Saul. I wanted you to are gonna a bit of absolutely love Better Call Saul. You need to watch it. It's amazing, um, and it's it, it's just as I said, his performance in that is amazing, and it's it's one of the roles that I've enjoyed like the the most that's been played by anyone in the last few years. He, it's just hard to see how anyone else could pull that off apart from him. He just does it so well. Um, so to see him get like quite an unexpected lead in an action film <laughs> peaked my interest quite a bit because it's it's quite but then I was like I saw the trailer I was like yeah that could that could work so this is it's directed by um uh Ilya Nyshuler mm-hmm. uh who some may know from he previously directed the it's like the first and I've not seen mm-hmm. this so but it's the first person um action film Hardcore Henry yeah which I saw the trailers for, and I don't know why I haven't seen it because it looks right up my street, and I'm going mm-hmm. to watch it after this. Um, and yeah, that was in 2016, I think he did that. So, and it looked really different as well because yeah, it's all first person based. I think that film it sort of looked mm-hmm. like a That's sort right. of first person shooter type game, but video you game know, in a film. Yeah, yeah. Um, so here we find Bob Odenkirk playing Hutch Mansell, uh, a seemingly pleasant suburban family man going about the daily grind working his office job in a steel factory and forgetting to take out the bins on a regular basis <laughs> and then things start to take a turn when his house is broken into by a couple of robbers um, but he's sort of seen as uh, a bit cowardly when he decides to take the cautious approach and not take the law into his own hands when he perhaps could have done quite easily uh, so this kicks things into motion with a with a bang, and we find a bit more out about his mysterious past. And what follows is basically a kick-ass, savage, and disturbingly satisfying fight and gunplay film, isn't it? <laughs> it's, um, yep. So I'm not I'm not going to go into the story too much because I really don't want to spoil any of the action that's on offer for it. But um, let's say it in it involves Hutch managing to piss off a very angry Russian <laughs> and the action is relentless. Um, there's some really well worked out fight sequences here. Um, the bus one, as you said, is just mm-hmm. awesome. Um, great camera work. It's cut together really well. It, you know, it's not one of those action films that's been guilty of like cutting together fast paced fight scenes where you just don't know what the hell's going on. It's just like fast cut after fast cut and it's just... It, it's cut together really well, I think. Um, so it's it's not a struggle to watch in any way. Um, I think, you know, Odenkirk's performance is really good in this for a man in his fifties. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you sort of you get used to see him in a, in an action role surprisingly quickly. It sort of he feels quite as well suited to it, to be honest. Mm, yeah. Um, there's some really good supporting turns in this as well. The uh, the standout being from Christopher Lloyd playing his uh, gun-toting father, <laughs> who was awesome. Um, you know, let's be honest, there's, there's nothing groundbreaking about it at all. It's We've seen it all before from the likes of, you know, as I said, John Wick and uh, Taken and things like that. It's, it's just 90 minutes of the main character kicking ass uh, and sometimes getting his ass kicked as well. Uh, you know, although we've seen it all before, it's funny in the right places. It's it's well paced. It looks really good, and I think Bob Odenkirk manages to somehow pull it off really well. I'm, uh, you know, I'm a bit biased as I said before because I'm a big fan of his from the, the previous stuff he's done. But right, it it's massive fun for me. It really hit the spot, and you know, if, if this kind of action stuff's your bag, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with it. What did you know? What did you think about it when you saw it on the big screen? Uh, you lucky bugger. I mean, yeah, that, that was the thing. Seeing it with an audience was great. The interaction and was, was awesome. I think I agree with absolutely everything that you say. Um, it, interestingly, as well, this was produced by David Leach, who also directed uh, the John Wick movies. Right. Um, so it, it, there, there have been comments recently and questions recently about whether or not nobody is part of the John Wick universe. Oh, so really there, are, there, are, there, are, there are conversations around that. Oh, um, 
which kind of would kind of make would kind of make sense i think um you know obviously you know i think that the fact that david leach is involved is a big is a big tell obviously the fact that derek kolstad is also involved is a big is a big tell you're right on the cast i think that you know bob odenkirk you, you've said everything that needs to be said i think this had an incredible people pleasing cast like rizza was in this mm-hmm. as you mentioned christopher lloyd doc brown himself blowing the shit out of people Um, (laughs) uh but we we won't spoil that too much michael ironside of course richter from um total recall yeah yeah see you at the party richter (laughs) um it just i love absolutely love michael ironside um but i think for me there's a standout scene in this which which you didn't go into and it's not much of a spoiler but it's the villain Played by Alexei <laughs> Serebiakov. Yeah, I know what you Who say. the the introductory scene to this villain was absolutely incredible. It was actually, yeah. It is a there's a Scorsese like uh, continuous dolly cam shot following him as he walks out of his car, walks across a road, and cars are like just swerving around him. And he yeah, he doesn't even across. bother stopping for the traffic. Doesn't bother, and you're like, oh, this guy's a mean motherfucker. He walks through, like goes into a club. They like part the doors for him. They're like, you know, come straight in. He takes off with like his raincoat, and he's got like this spangly jacket on. You're like, what is going on? He like grabs a martini, <laughs> like chugs it, walks through, like walks through the bar, like, and then it's a club, and then he walks straight up onto the stage, and does he? What can I be described as what a song and dance number? It's like a Eurovision number. It's like a Eurovision song contest song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, amazing yeah absolutely amazing i was just in fits of laughter at that yeah Uh, bob odenkirk looks great in this he's really like got into shape for this i was actually with the person i was with i was like it started and i kind of turned and i was like damn like he's been working out (laughs) um which was which was pretty obvious i think you know like the the general i think comments that you made around how it's shot makes so much of a difference like this kind of dialogue this kind of movie could be so bad if it wasn't done well and yeah. it's got that neo noir aesthetic that a lot of the John Wick movies have. You know, a lot of nighttime shots, a lot of yeah. rain shots when characters are experiencing, you know, low moments of character development and so on. Um, Love the look and feel. The car chases, the camera work, the fight scenes was everything. Everything on that was great. But as you say, the standout for me about this whole thing was how it was edited. The editing of this was tight. It was clear. They obviously shot a fuckload of of footage for this yeah and somehow managed to splice it all into something that was coherent that Mm -hmm. was interesting that was engaging and then we get home alone part three you know at the towards let's say the end of the movie yeah so you know all in completely agree with your review uh 100 recommend this and it is available now to buy video on demand or to rent video on demand yeah uh or it is available to see in cinemas if they happen to be open in your region indeed so go see that do nobody do it no everybody e- oh, everybody, everybody go, go watch nobody <laughs> <laughs> i hope no one opens a ketchup sachet and pours it all over the screen <laughs> you're doing it. but yes no brilliant and what did you, what did you, what are you, oh, I know what you're reviewing. <laughs> Go and ask me. <laughs> ask me. Miles, um, what are you uh, reviewing this week? Mortal Kombat! <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was so excited to watch this. Can you believe so we're excited. back here again? We've already talked about Mortal Kombat in this, on this podcast. The mm. 1995 Paul W.S. Anderson version. Yeah. Your soul is mine. I look forward but this to hearing time, your thoughts. <laughs> this time we sat down to watch Mortal Kombat, the 2021 reboot, remake, adaptation of a fighting video game. Yeah. And this follows the plot where, hunted by the fearsome warrior Sub-Zero, MMA cage fighter Cole Young finds sanctuary at the Temple of Lord Raiden. Training with experienced fighters Liu Kang, Kung Lao, and the rogue mercenary Kano, Cole prepares to stand with Earth's greatest champions to take on the enemies from Outworld in a high-stakes battle for the universe. So, first up, what is the fucking point, 
critiquing something that doesn't need to be critiqued. This is a reboot of a remake of a fighting video game, a beat em up video game. Mm-hmm. It's going to be bad, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's going to be bad. Yeah. Well, no, no, Phil, because that's not quite where it ends. Mortal Kombat can be summed up as a love letter to the game, and at no point does it feel like a hollow or unloved cash in. Warner mm-hmm. Brothers brought in an extremely novice Australian director called Simon McQuoid who had only directed commercials up until this point. Mm. And he assembled a cast of characters pulled from the Mortal Kombat universe, all with a bunch of complete unknown actors that you will not recognize. And with a premise that veers on the big, loud, and dumb of the 80s and 90s heyday actioners. But it's not a train wreck. And to be honest, I had way more fun with this than I did for Warner's other big, pandemic home release godzilla versus kong no no so where that jettisoned reality for science fiction this keeps things somewhat grounded that is until we see more of the outworld and the growing list of fighters pitched against earth's amateur defenders and underpowered heroes this is really well shot um with a really nice opening scene in feudal japan setting up the sub-zero versus scorpion rivalry which is for a long time, propelled the games into the upcoming 12th installment. This is basically Mm -hmm. the kind of war between Sub-Zero and uh, and Scorpion, Um, the the kind of ninjas, the yellow ninja and the the blue ninja. Yeah. There are also some incredible callbacks to the 1995 movie of the same name. One particular scene involving what I shall only say is described as a reptilian adversary. So that was loved, loved. Yeah. Hey, Phil. Yes. Knock, knock. Who's there? Kano. Kano who? Kano wins, you fucking beauty. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Without the star making an attention-grabbing turn from Hugh jackman light Aussie actor Josh Lawson as erstwhile Earthrealm fighter Kano, this movie would be an absolute fucking bomb. But Lawson, as Kano, chews up and spitwads out every line and scene until there is nothing left. He is exhausting. He is resplendent. He is (laughs) everywhere in this fucking movie. Nothing happens in this movie without Kano saying something about it and making fun of it. Yeah. It was, he was incredible. So he he nearly caused a fatality in my household, not from a gore-induced end, but from laughing my fucking ass off until I died. I absolutely loved this performance and his allegedly ad-libbed lines. A lot of this was him ad-libbing. Yeah. Uh, such as scenes where he's doing a lot of movie references for our listeners, which was great. He called Lord Raiden Gandalf at one point. <laughs> yeah. He called Liu Kang Harry Potter at one point for <laughs> shooting fireballs out of his hand. And uh, and then also he's constantly inquiring, when am I going to get me fucking superpower? <laughs> <It's just like laughs> the whole... This guy was a fucking hoot, and I think we should all take a moment to enjoy um, some some of I would say his lines from from this movie. So yeah. there are, there is some incredible scenes here. Obviously, the Kano wins you fucking beauty. There's a moment, failure, fucking failure. Let me educate you, motherfucker. I'm Kano. I'm the black fucking dragon. And who are you two, huh? You're some fucking cave-dwelling hippie twirling his anal beads, taking orders from Wushu, Wanker, who wears a harp cap as a helmet. Now, sit down and shut up and pass me a fucking egg roll. <laughs> <laughs> that whole scene's amazing. Oh, that whole scene was absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm just, but I was buzzing. There was yeah. also a great moment when Liu Kang, uh, um, uh, turns up and Kung Lao turns up and he twirls around with his like metal helmet thing that he's going to yeah. slice people in half with and Liu Kang says you should be on your knees before this man and Kano like takes a beat and looks at him and he goes I've a better idea how about you two get down on your knees and take turns sucking on my sack <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's there's just too, every there's too scene. many good lines that he's got in it. he's <laughs> it's constant I think you're right like without him this film is nothing <laughs> like it this seriously is... would be tripe it would be awful like bar a few good like fight scenes and stuff it would be really really bad it would he, be really ma- bad. he makes it 
like this film watchable and i laughed a lot watching it uh because Dude, of his, because of his scenes i thought he's he was brilliant. amazing yeah i thought it was amazing and you know what he's done for me yeah josh lawson he's put himself into first place for the wolverine role in the mcu oh yeah 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 he could do yeah yeah maybe i'm sure i'm sure after that because all that you see about it is you know how good he was in it and how the rest of the film's not very good and i think he's definitely done himself a lot of favors like doing that role like i'm sure star we'll making him, yeah i'm star sure making we'll a lot of other stuff look him up yeah. on, on imdb josh lawson he's got barely anything to yeah. his to his name to his credit yeah he was unbelievable in this yeah. i was laughing my ass off with that said this is by no means a great film it's just exactly what it says on the tin it's mortal fucking combat and I why mean, not yeah i mean but watch the 95 one it's on par with that isn't it like in good and bad Do you know <laughs> what i mean it's the worst movie of all time and it's best. also the greatest movie of all time yeah is that right yeah that's what you're I mean, you to can say. watch both and they're both their own thing but they're both as good as each other <laughs> Does anyone in Citizen Kane pull out a hat that has razor blades on it and saw a woman in half? Well, no. No. The <laughs> they've, got, they've got rose blood, but we've got lots of blood. Lots of blood, yeah. And that's what I will say about this. This is a Mortal Kombat movie that has, it's R-rated, 18 rated. It's killing people, cutting people up, heads exploding, heads getting, scru- getting squashed, yeah. uh, arms getting ripped off and frozen. And yeah. uh, I mean... That's what you want. It's exactly what it says. The only, the only thing it was missing, though, what uh, was a well, we didn't have a a practical Goro, did we? We had computer animated Goro. Yeah, and he was a bit shit. He was shit. Fair. He was absolutely he was a shit. Bit shit. Yeah, he was a bit shit. Yeah, that's what. But I, I still fucking loved it. I still fucking loved it. Right. Um, <laughs> anything else to add? Not really. It's Mortal Kombat, isn't it? <laughs> it's uh, lots of death. Lots of cheese. Um, yeah, that'll do. What I will say as well, stick around for the end credits because there is a a rehash of a very popular song that may or may not be associated to the original <laughs> Mortal Kombat movie. <laughs> that when it came on and I heard the, let's just call it the, the summoning. Yeah. I stood up in my living room and I danced around my living room. I bet you did. To it. Like I went rock. crazy. <laughs> I mean, crazy. I mean, so, yeah, okay. I mean, this is neither a flawless victory nor a humiliation. It does, however, get a recommendation oh from my us. God. From us? <laughs> you speak for yourself. Fuck off, Phil. Laser beams are better than fireballs, you fucking pussy. <laughs> I just want to add something. I need to, I need to say this. Yeah. Uh, the knock knock joke was uh, a manifestation from my good friend Dan, who had actually sent that to me. He he just did a voice message during the week, and he went, "Knock knock," and I replied back, "Who's there?" And then he did the whole Kano thing. And so I have to give him a shout out because I stole it from him. You stole yeah. it. Well, at least you gave. Me but credit. I do love you, Dan, and I will pay you back in beers the next time that I see you. <laughs> okay, Phil, I think it's time for this. <laughs> Hello there. Oh, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to Video Store Corner. Oh, it's very, uh, it smells musty. That'll be the uh, bourbon and desperation. Uh, do you ever got any sweet popcorn? No, we only have salty here because it's America. Oh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but would you like a box of junior mints? Oh, go on then. And some Reese's Pieces. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, Phil. Take a look around. Thanks. Um, I will. What are you in the mood for? Well, I'm in the mood for... Do you have any... Um... Have you got any films that make no sense whatsoever? And um... Um, Let me just check. I think they might be here under my pile of marijuana drugs. Let me just <laughs> lift this up. I mean, I would like one just... that makes no sense oh. whatsoever but also stars Kurt Russell. You got any of those? Well, I've got a few of those. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. Okay. Well, uh, Um, one that stars Kurt Russell and Kim Cattrall. 
Oh, Kim Cattrall from Sex and the City. Yeah. Yes, let me um, let me just dig in here. Um, have you Big Trouble in Little China? Oh yes, that sounds perfect. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> yes, it's the 1986 John Carpenter classic, Big Trouble in Little China. China. Mm. Phil, do you want to give us the plot description of this? Okay. Right. I'll try. So, <laughs> please do. Kurt Russell plays hard boiled truck driver Jack Burton. Who, for the entire movie, only talks about himself in the third person, yes. I would like to add. He does. Uh, and he gets caught in a bizarre conflict uh, within and underneath San Francisco's Chinatown. An ancient Chinese prince and Chinatown crime lord has kidnapped a beautiful green-eyed woman who is the fiancé to Jack's best friend. Mm-hmm. Jack must help his friend rescue the girl before the evil Lo Pan uses her to break the ancient curse that keeps him a fleshless and immortal spirit. You're a fleshless and immortal spirit. <laughs> the ultimate <laughs> insult. Ooh, you fleshless and immortal <laughs> spirit. I'll take two pints of baby sham, you fleshless and immortal spirit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I'm going to use that. Had you ever seen this movie before? Yes. But a long time ago, I haven't watched it for quite a few years. And when, like, when you were a little kid, or when? No, older, like or? later than that. Like, I don't know. Like maybe like late teens. Like, it's one of those films that's, you know, it, it's it's well, it, it's really cult, isn't it? This film, like, it's it very didn't, culty. It didn't yeah. do well um, at the time, and uh, but it's, I'm it's not become, doing well. <laughs> but it's become it has become a cult classic this film and yeah so everyone knows about it and it is a bit of an 80s classic um and i had seen it but probably you know in bits and it sort of seen it on tv when it was on but not sort of not really you know i was never like i never loved it but mm. only because i probably didn't really pay as much attention as i have this time <laughs> you'd never seen it have you i've never you'd seen never it i've seen never it. seen it I don't know why. I, I think I remember seeing Kurt Russell driving a truck into like an alleyway in Chinatown mm. and being inside. And that was pretty much, I think I might have seen it like when I was a little kid or something, but I don't remember anything about it. I didn't remember anything about it. So, and I don't, I kind of growing up, I always gravitated to the action movies that I knew were good. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the ones that I knew were very well regarded. And this was one that just for whatever reason, I just never really... I never really gave it the time of the day as much as I love Kurt Russell. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously this is him reteaming with John Carpenter. Yeah. Uh, they obviously had a good, a good run of, of films together. Um, I didn't love this as much as I thought I would. Okay. I think maybe in hindsight, I like it more after like get, letting it kind of breathe a little bit after a few days, after a few nights. I don't know. <laughs> but it's a really fucking weird movie. It's, it's really, really odd. weird, isn't it? It is. It is really, it's just, it's just mental. It's, it's, it's batshit crazy. This yeah. Film. yeah. It's like, and it's straight in, mm. isn't it? It's like, there's no messing. There's no messing. It's, how long is it? It's like an hour and, oh, you know how long it is? It's exactly the same length of What About Bob that we talked about in the last video. Is it really? It's an it's hour. pretty short then. It's an hour and 39 minutes. It's pretty short It's then. exactly yeah. the same length. Yeah. This, I, you know, I, I, I did, I don't know. I just, I wanted to really enjoy it. But I just, I don't know. For some reason, I just didn't, I didn't gel with it. It didn't have as, it didn't have as, as many kind of comic beats that I thought it would. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, in, in, in hindsight, it does. <laughs> uh, Kurt Russell going down a ramp backwards in a wheelchair and then falling into a well. For it was example. amazing. <laughs> There's loads of good um, bits in it. There are. In hindsight, again, it's like when I was watching, I was like, this is just really weird. It's making me feel uncomfortable. It's the kind of film you watch. You know when you've got like the flu and you watch a movie and you're, <laughs> you're like... You're drinking a Lucozade. You're drinking a Lucozade. 
Yeah, and you're trying not to be sick into a into a bin, a waste paper bin that your mum's given you. Yeah. It's like you I knew I was like, sick when my mum went to the shop and bought me a Lucas Aid. Yeah. You like, as oh, a Lucas Aid. I'm off school and I've out. got a Lucas Aid, I must be sick. Yeah, what you need is sugar. Is what you need. <laughs> Orange sugar. Um yeah. but this is that kind of movie where it's like a bit of a fever dream, isn't it? It's yeah. A bit of a fever dream. It's very odd. It's and the th- the thing is, there's a mix of like, and I'm, I'm sticking my fingers up in the air, good acting, and that was quote unquote, yeah. But there's some very bad acting mm. as well. Like some really, it, I'm, I'm surprised that Kim Cattrall had a career after this. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I wasn't it's, even thinking it's about so her. So hammy. I thought she was one of the good ones. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just think. There's a lot of bad performances in it. But it's just, it doesn't matter. Look at what it is about. It's, it's fucking mental. Yeah. I mean, so what would you say, what would you say is your favorite scene in this movie? Oh, 100%. Um, so you've got the guys that are like the, you know, you've got low pan, but he's like soldier guys. Oh, the are, three storms. Yeah. So you've got the like, guys that come down with the big like, like, like rain, hats on. Yeah, yeah. It was very looked, Raiden, wasn't it? I just watched yeah. Mortal Kombat and I was like, I know. he's back. It's yeah, three he's of him come now. back, but it's like, it's like Raiden if he was in Spaceballs. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like Daft Helmet, but it's Raiden Daft Helmet. Um, so, you, 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 because you've got those guys like Thunder, Rain, and Lightning, I think they're called, hmm. the three guys. And um, Thunder, who's like the re- like the big one, but he always looks like a psycho and sort of is always screaming at the camera. Yeah. That guy. So it's yeah. when, after, spoiler alert, Lopan gets killed. Um, <laughs> and like out of like <laughs> sadness and anger, he just like loses his temper. He's like temper. The lightning guy. Yeah. And, yeah. No, the other guy, Thunder. Like the, the, big, oh, the Thunder guy. Yeah. Yeah. And, he just like Lopan gets killed. He sees him dead, and then for no reason whatsoever, he gets so angry that his head explodes. <laughs> he like blows up like a balloon, like and it turns into this weird animatronic person, like looks like a comic, like yeah, and then just explodes. Yeah, um, I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I accompanied this move this movie with, and it's legal in New York now, with a lot of marijuana. Right, and 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 it it did help. That, it did help. Did it? I was just sitting there, like I might have had a heart attack if that was me. The guy's head explodes, and then the lightning guy follows them down into the sewer. And as yeah. he's like, as he's like trying to get them, they all climb up through this hole, and they're all like in this like this vent shaft, like looking down. This lightning guy starts coming out of this hole up towards them. Yeah, and he drops like a statue on him, something. <laughs> Got the statue on him, and he falls, and he falls back down through the hole. I'm crying with laughter. <laughs> It's nuts. It is Isn't fucking it? nuts. Also, there's a lot of like creatures in this that I was not <laughs> expecting. Yeah, it's like, I was like, this is an '80s action movie. It's set like with like some like mythical kind of like Chinese, you know, um, myths and warriors and stuff. Um, but then <laughs> there's like these weird fucking like lizards yeah, and eyeball got, monster things. Yeah, you got like the zombie bear guy as well. Like the- what? You know, like the the the, the weird like oh that weird like orangutan thing like yeah like a so zombie. That there's you, so until this point in the movie, you don't even know this kind of thing exists in this realm. But they're they're like go into this factory. There's like all of them in this factory. Kim Cattrall's been kidnapped, and Kurt Russell and his little buddy help them to escape, and they're all running out. But Kim Cattrall, rather than running out, decides to open this door and have a look in this room before she leaves because <laughs> she's a roving reporter. Yeah, curiosity killed the cat Trowell. And she opens the door, and as she does it, this fucking hand, hairy arm comes out, like <laughs> 10 feet high above her, slaps her on the forehead and, like, drags her into the room. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> what is going on? And the eyeball thing's really weird. It's like a floating ball of eyes, isn't it? That It's like a spy. Uh, <laughs> that Lopan can see. You can see yeah, everything. Yeah, see I've seen here. everything. Of course, yeah. I've seen everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like that's the, weird. It's that weird mix of like it's that proper eighties animatronic type, like yeah. green screen stuff. Um, yeah, some really random scenes. Also, the scene when um, the two women and it's like classic eighties. Like it's not very PC. This movie. No, 
but like the two women have been kidnapped and of course they're the two love interests and they're both like stood in the throne room like Lopan's throne room and for no fucking reason these dudes are doing like sword work and stuff like around them and they're just yeah. like staring oh, I had no idea what was going on I was just <laughs> sitting there like yeah because the big guy is like what? marching towards the camera but really slowly and it goes on for like uncomfortably long and he's going it, it, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah like I was like, sword, like towards the screen I was watching this I was like is this uh, uh, can only I see this is this made for me <laughs> it's for you <laughs> like I was just sitting there. I was sitting there on my own watching this feeling very uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> I sat there with a beer watching it. I was loving it. <laughs> oh. um, what about, have you got any favorite lines from this? Yeah. My favorite line is when they go to visit David Lopan. And this is Lopan is the evil wizard. Yeah. That's like nine feet tall or whatever that gets run over by the truck at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. And um, they, they go to visit David Lopan. And he's mm. this guy in a wheelchair comes out. It's like night, this 2000 year old guy or whatever comes out in his wheelchair and he's like talking to them and he looks like an animatronic doesn't he they've got the old man makeup on him yeah and he looks like an animatronic he's like yes yes, yes. i'm david lopan you uh don't i don't know what you want i don't have your women blah 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 kind of thing and then he's like yeah you know we we just came here for you know to see if we can get our our friends back kind of thing and then like this like little alarm goes off and he like wheels his wheelchair over to the over to this like bank of like com- computer terminals and there's a CCTV screen there. Yeah. And he like looks at it and there's like a group of people like trying to get into the main security area, like talking to the security guard. And yeah. Kurt Russell's like, oh, those are our friends. Uh, they're not supposed to be here. And David Lopan almost looks at the camera and goes, now this really pisses me off. No end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really weird. <laughs> Uh, what I about mean, you? I think <laughs> I think Jack Burton's got a lot of good lines. Like he's like he talk he, he likes to talk about himself a lot. But then like <laughs> I like the one where he says uh I think it's towards the end where she's in like the geisha sort of makeup type thing, you know, the yep. ceremony. And I think Gracie, like Kim Cattrall, says something like, I'd go with you, but and then he just goes, I know he interrupts her, he goes, I know there's a problem with your face. <laughs> it's like what and there's there's another one where it's like they're in it's before they go into the like the you know the underground type thing and they're they're back in the like the cafe or whatever and the other woman like the reporter says oh aren't you even going to kiss her goodbye and he just looks at her and goes yeah Margot that's it and he says uh, to Jack Burton aren't you even going to kiss her goodbye and he just looks at Kim Cattrall and goes nope (laughs) and just (laughs) walks walks off off. yeah (laughs) it's brilliant I was sitting there, I was like, what the f- what is going on? <laughs> I was like, I had to rewind that bit. I was like, what, hang on. Did I miss it? Why doesn't he want to kiss her? Did something happen? Oh, he's just a weirdo. He's just an arsehole. <laughs> he's just full of himself. He's really. pursuing he's her. Full of himself. He's gaslighting her for the entire movie. He sees her at like the, in the airport, doesn't he? And he's like, oh, I like a bit of that. And he goes over to her and she's yeah. like, get the hell away from me, you dirt bag, or whatever. Yeah. And then he's pursuing her for the whole movie. He goes to save her life. And at the end of the movie, they're like, She's like, oh, aren't you going to kiss him? She's like, he's like, no. No. <laughs> then walks out. <laughs> just walks gets off. in his truck and drives off. I was like, Did, what have I missed? Did she upset him in some way? <laughs> I mean, the best, <laughs> the best thing about this film, right, is that uh, I think, you know, this was definitely planned, but it's like, um, it's like a play on the traditional, like, he's the main character, Jack Burton. Right. And... But apart from like a couple of scenes, he's like pretty rubbish. Like he knocks himself out at one point, like when he's about to spring into action. Like and um, yes, he does. What's his name? Uh, his his friend uh, Wang Chi, who's played by Dennis Dunn. Sorry, what? <laughs> Wang. You're gonna be Chi. careful with that. You go blind. <laughs> he, you know, he's like the one that's like his little friend, who's meant to be like his sidekick, sort of thing. Yeah, he's amazing. He's like awesome, he's and the that's the point. Star. Like Jack. Jack Burton's like meant to be good. Absolutely he's muscly, shit. sort of like, but he's yeah. he's crap. He's got a knife yeah. that he keeps pulling out. He never fucking uses it. Just Wang throw Chi's it and there, it hits like, a gong. At yeah, one point. yeah, and like Wang Chi's there, just like kicking ass and sort of like yeah. flying through the air. And 
that that whole scene where he's like having those there's like that weird scene that i've forgotten about with the lightning guy where they're fighting each other and they keep flying past each other and kicking each other mid oh my god like, and it's it's mental isn't it yeah and they, then, no they're like they're like swording each other in the air for ages yeah that's it with a sword it's like they're yeah. flying through the they air keep flying but, past each other but we got to talk about why that is there's if there's that great scene this is a great scene that i forgot about where Egg, who's the bus driver of yeah. Chinatown, like the he's tourist amazing. bus of China, he's amazing in this. Mm-hmm. And he takes them, he finds this, they're about to go into like the last level, if you think of it like a video game, like yeah. to defeat all the end bosses. And he goes, they go into this bar that they find in this underground underworld thing. And he's like, oh, this is like the, uh, you know, the elixir. It's like you drink it and you get like superpowers and strength and stuff. And he's like, what? No, we just like do these shots. Yeah. And then the next scene, you see them going down to like the the final battle, and they're all chucked. They're all like stuck in an ele- elevator together, aren't yeah. they? And they all just start like wigging out, they're like, like laughing at each other. They're all like giggling, and he's like, "Does anybody else feel warm in here?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I feel pretty weird. Like I feel pretty good. <laughs> I was watching. I was like, "I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean." I'm like, I'm- I get it. Oh, I feel and then they like jump too. out. The doors open and they like jump out. Like machine guns going off, and Wang Chi's like flying through the air for like forty seconds, yeah. like having a sword fight. Jack like, Burton oh. knocks himself out. Jack Burton knocks himself out as soon as, he en- as soon as he walks in, doesn't he? Yeah. But then, actually, one one thing I found really cool in that I thought looked really good was when um, Egg Shen and David Lopan are like fighting each other, and they get like their powers, and like that light comes out, you know, and they're sort of like battling. Yeah, like each other, and it, they're like up high, aren't they, on the thing? And it looks really cool. Yeah. I thought that was really yeah. good. The effects yeah. look really good. Lopan, when he when he's also when he goes through the walls, yeah, <laughs> when he's floating through the walls, I love that. I thought it was yeah. cool. Like, yeah, yeah, it's really it was, good. It was like it looked. I'm coming around to it. Yeah. I'm coming around to this. You Come on, give it, us some really. trivia. What have you got? Oh what man, you I've got? got some absolute like trivia might be a little bit long today i'm sorry but it, there's some it's good stuff phil's here. extended cut <laughs> of the trivia section right so the three storms as we know the the uh, bad guys were partly the inspiration for the popular character of thunder god raiden from mortal Kombat. called it called it <laughs> i know <clears throat> uh, it's me christopher lambert <laughs> i thought you'd like that um uh, yeah, well, and they say that while David Lo- uh, David Lopan was a, the inspiration for the evil sorcerer Shang Tsung. There we go. Oh, nice little Mortal Kombat link there. Your soul is mine. Your soul is mine. Fools. Um, Fools. <laughs> uh, Jackie Chan was John Carpenter's first choice to play Wang Chi. Oh, uh, wow. But producer Lawrence Gordon was highly against it. Uh, fearing that Chan's English wasn't good enough after seeing his performances in Battle Creek Brawl and The Protector, but Carpenter wanted Chan after the success of Police Story, 1985, so like the year before. Chan yeah. declined, and Dennis Dunn was then cast instead. Damn. Oh, fucking hell. If Jackie Chan was in this, it would have been amazing. Wow. Yeah. He was. Yeah, he would have been amazing. Super cop. Fucking hell. Oh, man. Police Jackie story, Chan fucking... and Kurt Russell. Oh, wow. Wow. According to John Carpenter, the opening of the film with Egg Shen, Victor Wong, uh, in the lawyer's office, yeah, uh, it was weird. Added... Weird starting scene. Yeah, weird well, this is scene. why. So it's, it was added in in at the request of 20th Century Fox executives in order to make Kurt Russell's character Jack Burton more heroic. Oh, so they didn't get the idea of him uh, being like up. a sidekick rather than like right. a hero. So without the added scene, the film would have started with. Uh, Jack driving to San Francisco in the truck, you know, when he's on like the radio, which yeah. would have made sense as well, you know, like as an open kind of scene. building him up basically. Yeah. So they just wanted to like, you know, say, oh, he was like amazing. Um, but he really wasn't. Like, no, you get to the wasn't. end of the film, you're like, oh, 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 he was, oh, he was yeah, he was pretty shit. I mean, he didn't, <laughs> yeah, he didn't even, do anything. Like, nice kiss vest, the though. girl. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Um, really nice vest. Really nice. <laughs> Um, Kurt Russell suffered a bad case of flu during uh, the scene just after the brothel. You know, he goes into the brothel to mm. find the green eyed girl. Uh, so the sweat on his body is real, caused by the fever. Did, do you think his mum brought him a bottle of Lucozade? I, I hope so. Like like on the set. Paper like, the I just thought you want this, like a Lucozade. Yeah, he has that, love. <laughs> There's here, I've got him a mixing bowl for you to vomit into. <laughs> All right. Um, 
John Carpenter and Kurt Russell explain on the audio commentary that the test screening was so overwhelmingly positive that both of them expected it to be a big hit. However, 20th Century Fox put little into promoting the movie and it ended up being a box office bomb. Uh, yeah. In addition, the film was released in the midst of the hype for Aliens in 1986. Oh, wow. Uh, which was released 16 days also afterwards. A Fox movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, you they, know. That's where Fox went. They, they uh, probably bought their big director and they were like, right. Yeah, exactly. The best of you me. know, they were really pushing that one, weren't they? 16 yeah. days afterwards. A bit unfortunate, really. Uh, however, it went on to be a huge cult hit through home video. Carpenter and Russell explained that the reason the studio did little to promote the film was because they simply didn't know how to promote it. I mean, it's tr- it's like it's true. Like, how do you get across what that film's about in a trailer? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Um, now, this is interesting. Kurt, Kurt Russell turned down the lead role of Connor McLeod in Highlander in 1986. <laughs> Fucking to, hell. To appear in this I just instead. talked about Christopher Lambert, didn't I? Yeah, well. I just wait, talked about we're it. We're linking it all today, mate. So, Lambert, Raiden. Raiden Christopher Lambert played Raiden in Mortal Kombat 1995. We yep. just reviewed Mortal Kombat. Kurt Russell turned down the role of Raiden, and the Three Storms were Raiden was based on the Three Storms. Yeah, and Shang Tsung. We love. It. How pro are we? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, both films, both of those films were released by 20th Century Fox as well. Um, Wild. This is a good one. According to John Carpenter and Kurt Russell, in the DVD commentary, the story was originally written as a Western, but Carpenter decided to set it during modern times. They even mentioned that instead of Jack Burton's truck being stolen, it was originally his horse. <laughs> they steal his horse. Oh, my God. I got to get that. my horse Imagine back. big trouble in Little China, but it's in a Western setting. That'd be mental. I mean, it was... It... There, there's actually a reference, isn't there, to the gold rush and the amount of Chinese immigrants that came to San Francisco yeah. during that time. So I'm guessing that was probably something like they called a callback to the original script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It's um, funny, actually. I'm just looking here. I just saw that the the budget was 19 to $25 million US at the time, which for right. inflation is probably like 80 Yeah. now. Um it did eleven million at the wow. box office. Yeah, so it didn't even make it didn't even make didn't half make the money back. No. no, which is crazy as well because a lot of the stuff that's shot in Chinatown is a soundstage. Yeah, you can see they that. created. It, it? it looked awesome. Yeah, and there's that single shot. Do you remember when the when the three storms arrive and they run over Lo, Lo Pan and you and you, they <laughs> jump out of the truck? Do you yeah. remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They run around a corner. And there's like smoke and there's like these cars there and then the Look lights come on bit. the cars and then some ninjas jump out and they run off and then they run through the street and they see the storms killing these like ninja guys in the street. Like they've decimated them. Yeah. And they kind of run into like, and I thought it was really well done. It was, yeah, a, it was really like cool. One continuous shot. Really, really cool. Yeah, you yeah. kind of see where they were going with it. Um, but there wasn't enough of that, I think. But yeah, I can... I. It's a hard sell, this movie. It is a hard sell. Yeah. But sorry, going back to your to your trivia. Only, so yeah, only a couple of bits, but the last one is absolute gold, right? So um so this is the fourth of five movies um John Carpenter and Kurt Russell have done together. So they did uh Elvis in seventy nine, yep. Escape mm-hmm. from New York in nineteen eighty one, The Thing in eighty two, and Escape from LA in ninety six. Uh so they obviously like working together, don't they? And then this one. Well, they, they did until Escape from LA. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. Wasn't it? it was yeah, terrible. It was um, this one, and I really want to know if you picked this up because I, I, no bullshit, I nerded out and I guessed this when it was on, right? So do you remember the interior of Egg Chen's like, garage and office that they are in before they go down, they slide down a pole and they go into the underworld? I was like, is that the Ghostbusters poll? It fucking is the Ghostbusters poll. Yeah! Like, and I picked that up. I was like, I was looking at it and I was like, that really looks like the interior of like the Ghostbusters firehouse. But like, it looks different. It's all green. And I was like, that really looks like it. And then I read the, tr- it is the, the exact, it's the same building that they use for the Ghostbusters firehouse is Egg Shen's like garage office. <laughs> is fire they use, station use the same, the, the same it's set. The same. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same building that they used. Wow. Fire Station 23. 
which as we know as film nerds and having been there uh the ghostbusters firehouse inside is different to the outside in the real world to the real world yes. fire station which we've been to together in together. new york we is, held each other outside we, did. we embraced we cried we're like ghostbusters <laughs> oh my god my dreams are coming true i don't know why i've got this accent <laughs> oh, yeah, but fuck in, it i'm going with it i'm in ghostbusters um yeah so i walk past there all the time drunk and i'm like I like walk up to the door, stumble up to the door and like the door's open. There's a fire truck and all the firemen. And I'm like, and they've got like the Ghostbusters sign outside. I'm like, can I, um, can I slide down the pole? And they're like, <laughs> can I come in? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, goodbye Ghostbusters. And then I walk up. <laughs> I think this building should be condemned. I've got There's a task for you. serious metal fatigue and all the load bearing members. <laughs> The wiring is substandard. It's completely inadequate for our power needs, and the neighborhood is like a demilitarized zone. <laughs> Guys, this place is great. We should stay here tonight. You know, <laughs> try it out. Look at this old pole. <laughs> <laughs> I've Race lights down you. the pole. I've got a challenge for you. Next yeah. time you go past that building, if the door's open, uh, I don't care if you get arrested doing this, but I want you to run in there. I want you to pick up the phone, and I want you to scream at the top of your voice, We got one! That one! <laughs> That's all I want you to I do. I could do that. Okay. But you have to Oh, film. should I pick it up and go, Ghostbusters, what do you want? What do you want? Yeah, you do. What do you, you want? Do first. And then you have to shout, we you got, got it. and then run out. And then, but you, you have to it. run out going, but did it, did it, but did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, up the town. Yeah. And that's my trivia. Should we talk about Ghostbusters instead? Yeah, sorry. We just, we got sidetracked there. Big trouble. Are you, Phil, menstruating right now? Big trouble in Little China. I liked it. After and do you know what? Do you know what, Phil? After talking about it with you, I feel like I liked it too. You liked it, didn't you? I know you yeah. did, really. I would watch that again. Yeah. A few years. <laughs> yeah. Good few years, I'd say. <laughs> Maybe when I've got the flu. <laughs> like Kurt Russell. Lucas Aid to bottle of Lucas Aid. Phil, do you have any uh, last words for us this week? No. No, never. No. Just want to go to bed, don't you? I just want to go. I've had enough. <laughs> well, on that note, join us on the next Movie Mouth <laughs> film and TV podcast with another slice of movie and TV related podcast fun. But before then, please follow our Facebook and Instagram accounts at, at Movie Mouth Podcast and hit subscribe. And if you're a regular listener and you haven't done this, please give us a nice five star review on your podcast player of choice bill yeah <laughs> there's just one last thing to say isn't there is there yeah there is what's that i also give really good foot massages <laughs> <laughs> goodbye goodbye <laughs>